So it was cool. And then I got to talk about it with my therapist and uh, discuss my kind of self-destructive tendencies because I keep doing things that make my life far more difficult and that distance me from other people because people don't want to be around someone like me. It makes them feel unsafe. And so I was telling my teacher, well, yeah, I think my therapist, maybe I just need to like refine this a little bit and you know, just pull back and be a little more strategic about when I speak out. But otherwise, I'm on the right path. But I admitted, and he said to me, like, do you even want to change? I don't think you want to change. Like, we've been working together for years. And he says, I don't think you want to change. And I said, well, no, I don't think I do. But at 2 a.m., I often get this, like, still, small voice that says to me, Luke, you need fundamental change, or you're going to destroy yourself and people around you. You need to fundamentally change. So I just hear that still, small voice. So my therapist said, well, whose voice is that? And I said, it's no one's voice. It's what my Christian upbringing called the conscience. And the conscience says, okay, you need to fundamentally change. You can't just like make some strategic alterations to the way you do things. You need to fundamentally change. Because I keep like, you know, with my sarcastic humor and provocative remarks, I keep, you know, keep people at arm's length. Okay. So in other words, graduation went well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and they had a big uh, plate of shrimp in my honor. Oh, very nice. Okay, so uh, a, a shout out. We got another person. This this chat room is filling up so fast. Blue. We got already got five people. This is I, it's like Jews at a buffet. I, yes, or you can eat buffet it, it's of kiddish. shrimp. Of shrimp. Yeah. Now, now I don't understand it because my people. These are all my people, and and they will not come out when the Rabbi Rab show comes out. I'm sitting there all by myself. But now you know the, they see you and they come out. So, big shout out. We got a, a Youngstown, Ohio Catholic. I don't know who you are, but thank you. Uh, uh, welcome to the show and uh, let us know who you are because I like to know who the people are rather than uh, just have some anonymous girls from Stern. I want to say something and I don't want you to comment on it. I mean, I can't stop you, but um, Henry says, Do you think that Luke took this job in order to touch women? Luke has to touch women, which is forbidden with this job. And so that's very interesting. But you see, for me, when I touch, it's very medicinal. It's like, it's not, it's not really forbidden. It's like, you know, when a doctor touches a patient or when a um, chiropractor touches a patient or, I, you know, when a rabbi touches a woman who wants a divorce. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, so uh, Youngstown, Ohio Catholic, is her name is Faith. Hi, Faith! My name's Love. Uh... Welcome to the show. I, I, if, let us know how you found us. I had, a, I had a visitor the other day when I was doing the Ask Rabbi Rabbi. A visitation? Show. No, from, somebody from, in the chat another world. No, a visitor in the chat room. And, Someone and, who died? And, no, it was just some rapper. He said he was a friend of Snoop Dogg. And, and like, he just, I don't know how these people find us. It's great. Because uh, we try to make ourselves so invisible that, you know, so our ratings yeah, we won't try to go keep up. <laughs> we try to keep it on down low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep our ratings low <laughs> so we don't get noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so welcome, Faith. Okay, so, oh, quick uh, question. Henry or anybody in the chat room, let us know. What is this? How was the sound? There was nobody here for a sound test. Okay, so while you're answering me that question. Anonymous uh, girl from Stern. Shall we go into Oh, that? no, I wanted to mention sound yeah. is good. Everybody says sound is good. All right. Uh, I found you guys through Luke's website. Sweet. Good. Well, welcome. Uh, we, you know, we wore the glasses, and I got to tell you something, lady. I got to tell you something. Yeah. I'm doing a. Uh, you know, everybody knows I'm doing a clinical trial for a... Uh, Erectile dysfunction. Yes. <laughs> for a drug, right? I'm doing a... a and, and I'm working with a... A, a, the, per, the, a black doctor. No, I'm working with a, a medical doctor uh, uh, in a clinic, and the doctor was, was talking about uh, uh, um, sleep. Mm -hmm. We were talking about sleep and, and, and whatnot. And, and I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but we were talking about sleep and falling asleep and these kind of things. And he was saying that in nowadays, that the, he said that the body, this is very interesting, you may know about this already, but I just, I, it reminded me of our conversation when you first started wearing the glasses, because he's on the same page. He said, the body naturally has its own ways of built in of uh, releasing serotonin to put people to sleep at night. Like mm -hmm. during the day, you're all energized, and then at night, right. you know, like, uh, the bright lights go away, right. and then you start getting like a little bit, oh, I'm ready to go to bed, and then the serotonin kicks in, and then you go to sleep. But the problem is nowadays, there's all these bright lights, and there's the computer right, and right. everything, and your body never knows when it's time to go to bed. Right. You know, you could literally be up for days because it doesn't, it doesn't have that 
dark time. So he was saying, uh, it's not a bad idea to put on the sunglasses at night. And I was like, whoa, this dropped right out of the lady. <laughs> Ford handbook because when you wear the sunglasses at night, is this the reason why you yeah, were told to yeah, do it? Yeah. Because it tricks the mind. Yeah. It tricks the mind into thinking, oh, it's it's not so bright out. Yeah. So it must be getting late at night and yeah. therefore I'm gonna get tired and go to sleep. Does it yeah. work? I I think it helps. You think it helps? Yeah. Like I was I was so excited uh Sunday night because I got an email that like this money that I asked to borrow was coming through. So I got so excited I just couldn't sleep all night. It's like, yeah, I can pay the rent, health insurance, right? And, and then I then I couldn't sleep. So shall we talk about anonymous girl? Okay, from let's Stern? Do, let's do anonymous girl from Stern. Anonymous girl, girl from, from Stern. Stern, you've got a lot to, to learn, learn, and I want to teach you if you'll let me. And so, this week's Torah portion... Oh, you added a bunch of stuff. And this is Vayashe, Genesis 37 to 40. But first of all, anonymous girl from Stern. Orthodox, Ju Orthodox Jewish students tailor premarital sex, real or not, Royals Yeshiva University campus. So what happened is about a, a few days ago, I got an email from some anonymous person sending me a link to this controversial post on the YU Be Beacon, which is a unofficial student newspaper of Yeshiva University in Stern College. And it was a story about a, a modern Orthodox woman, a Stern College student who went to a hotel and uh, met her lover there. And then the next day, she's you know walking away. She gets on the phone and thinks, hmm, I think I made a mistake. So most unmarried students at YU and Stern College, from what I understand, maybe 80 or 90 percent have not had sex. So premarital sex in this environment is forbidden and it's not particularly common and so she talks about in this story about slipping off a bra and you just don't talk that way in orthodox life because you know we're all about modesty and holiness so it's a anonymous provocative essay perhaps it's fictional but its theme is premarital sex and has caused a big ruckus at uh, the, the, the citadels of modern orthodoxy in New York. <laughs> Citadel of <laughs> and I think it's great. I think it's great that it's a ruckus because one of the great things about Orthodox Judaism is that it makes more of life more exciting and more important. So in pretty much the rest of the world, if you have premarital sex, you know, it's not a big deal. No one would get excited. But in Orthodox Judaism, because we have standards for how you eat and how you have sex and, and how you dress, uh, these things become significant. And so because Orthodox Judaism has standards, you have people pushing it back and saying, hey, a newspaper associated with an Orthodox uh, college should not be publishing essays about premarital sex. Bingo. That's where I want to weigh in. Go ahead. Right. For the first problem here, this is a whole troubling, this whole thing is very troubling. The fact that it hit like the New York Times, I think it's a tremendous chil Hashem. I think it's a tremendous chil Hashem. The whole thing is a chil Hashem. The song that we're singing is funny, right? Because it's already out, like the, the cat's out of the bag and you want to make fun of it, whatever, right? But the fact that we even have this conversation right now is a Chilol Hashem, right? Yeah, it really bothers me too. I'm pretty cut off about it's, it. It's really sad that uh, this whole event... The first, are you not even paying attention? I am listening. Uh-huh. How many you fingers said it's have really sad. How many fingers have you have yeah, one. <laughs> okay, here's the problem. The first problem is, this is an anonymous story. There is no shortage of... An, uh, Anonymous cowards on the internet, and and uh, in this case it wasn't the internet, but it was a... Um... Well, it was online. I don't think it's a print publication. Okay, it's but it doesn't matter. Online, it's yeah. an online paper. I don't care what it's in. I hate anonymous. If you want to say something, put, your, put, your, put up or shut up. Put your balls on the line. Put your schmeckle on there. Put your schmeckle on the line and come out and tell us who you are. I hate trolls. I hate trolls. We get them, you know, into our chat room. Not tonight. Everybody's identified who they are, right? But I hate it when a troll comes in and starts arguing against us, like your friend, uh, what's his name, Haima Malik, who's the ultimate troll, and he comes in there, you know, the Lakewood Rob, and he starts trashing me, trashing Judaism, making a whole bunch of anti-Semitic remarks, trashing the sages, trying to tell people, you know, to marry Christian girls, and all this kind of crap. Tell us who you are. And Levy, of course, is going to protect him because Levy's like, you know, a, a, a addicted... I enjoy him and he's my best friend. No, Aside it, from those 